Multi-factor authentication means we're using one, two, three, four, maybe five different types of information to gain access onto the network. Generally, we refer to these as something you know, like a username or a password, maybe something you have, like a token or a token generator, or maybe something you are. Maybe we're using biometrics, a fingerprint, or a handprint to gain access to a resource. These can be expensive if you want to provide hardware tokens for everybody out in the field. Those hardware tokens will have a pseudo random number. So you have to type in your username. You have to know your password. And then here's something that I have, which is this physical token, where I also have to type in a series of numbers that might be on that token. And then I've gained access to the network. If the token's not with me, I'm not going to gain access onto those resources. This may be something that is not expensive, though. These days, there are a lot of applications that run on our smartphones that have the same functionality. And they're going to present us with that same pseudo random number every 30 seconds. And it's going to change every 30 seconds. So if we need to gain access to the network, we're going to have to provide our username, our password, and we need our mobile phone with us so that we can then run that application and get that pseudo random number from our mobile device. A good example of something you have is something like your ID card. And these days, many of the ID cards also double as smart cards. There's probably a slot that's in your laptop. You can also get add-ons to desktop computers where you can take your ID card and slide it right into the slot so that that is something that you have. And then at that point, you usually have to put in a PIN or some other type of authentication to also confirm that it's really you. You might carry around a USB token. It may be this type of USB device that you also have to plug into a USB port to authenticate. Or it might be those hardware or software tokens that we previously talked about, where we're walking around with a PayPal key. And if we need to gain access to PayPal, we have to type in the code that shows up on PayPal's specialized hardware token. And of course, maybe even your phone. These days, even the software on your phone makes it easy. We'll log in with our username and password. Maybe we're not even running a specialized application. Our third-party authentication server might send us a text message. And that text message might have in it the specialized code that then we would have to type in. So it's almost the same as having that smartphone app, except the application piece is somewhere else. But we still need our phone to be able to receive that text message. And then we can type in our code, and we gain access to the resources on our network. These days, if you're in a very secure environment, you have a lot of remote users, and you want to provide a little bit more authentication than what you're using today, then you'll probably want to look into using this multi-factor authentication.